I left and I walked away from my earnout and I decided to take a bet on me. The bet was, can I create more value in the next year working on my own company from scratch than staying with the company with a predictable outcome? This is millions of dollars on, on the line. Hey there, I'm Dan Martell, serial entrepreneur, investor, and creator of SaaS Academy. In this episode, I'm gonna share with you some beliefs, some ideas around why I believe that the world rewards courageous decisions. And I'm looking at you. I want you to make courageous decisions because what I've discovered over my life is the moments where I could have went left, but instead I went right, where it would have been safe, but instead I took some risk, where I could have taken the easy option, but instead I went to the hard option option is where my life has progressed and I was rewarded for that. Let me give you a real tangible example. Back in the day, I think it was 2012, I had just sold my company Flowtown. I'm working at the Acquirer and I'm enjoying it. We're having a lot of fun. We're, we're building, we're integrating, we've got the team there, I'm getting them all set up and you know what happened was I came up with this idea. At, at the time it was a productivity tools and you know I ended up calling it Clarity but it was a way for me to, to make myself available over the phone. So it's like I send out a link, people add themselves to it like a call list, and then I would just call them. And what happened was is that over the next two months, while I was playing around building this tool on the side, it started to pick up steam. It started to, to become a thing. There was this moment where I went to the roof of my condo building and I tweeted out this link, said, hey, if, I, if you need any advice, you know, fill out this, form and I'll give you a call. And I posted it out on Twitter and I had hundreds of people fill out this form and I just sat there on the roof staring at San Francisco, talking to these founders from all over the world, people in Japan and Europe and that I'd never met, that had been following me for two or three years. And I had this epiphany moment where I was like, what if you could take all the brilliance that I'm looking out that existed in this city of San Francisco, what I could unlock all of that knowledge and make it available to the rest of the world through a simple platform, a simple network. And that was when Clarity.fm kind of started becoming a thing. It's a seed of an idea, but I had an issue. I was working, I only had a 12 month earnout. So my company got acquired a few months prior and I had to stick around to uh, complete what's called an earnout. So usually when a company gets acquired, you get cash up front, you get stock, but then there's a portion of it that, uh, and sometimes it can be as much as 50%, in our case I think it was about 30%, that was, that was held back to make sure that one, we delivered on our commitments, that we stuck around, that we hit certain numbers, et cetera. And what happened for me is I came up with this idea of clarity and I couldn't let it go. I just kept thinking about it. I remember one time I was working on the interface of the, the product, I was redesigning the mobile experience, and my fiance at the time, Renee, maybe my girlfriend at the time, no, oh, no, fiance, she came in the living room at like three in the morning and she's like watching me like look at these screens. She's like, what are you doing? And I'm just like, I gotta, I gotta build this. Like I just had this calling, this, this vision for what it could be at that point and I couldn't let it go. And I remember talking to my lawyers because I didn't want to get in trouble uh, building it during work hours of the acquire and then run into some IP issues like the Winklevoss twins did with Mark Zuckerberg. If you haven't seen The Social Dilemma, the movie you know, maps out everything. So um, what happened was is that I needed to make a decision. I had to make a decision. Do I wait 10 months, nine months to go all in on this new crazy idea or do I like take my own advice and make a decision to jump in with both feet. And I'm telling you, it was hard, but I, I mean, at that point, you know, in my life, I'd been blogging and speaking at events and talking about like, you know, entrepreneurship and taking risk and, you know, doing things that are uncomfortable and, and, and not, you know, doing the easy stuff. And there's one point I just, I got mad at myself. I was like, okay, Dan, like you keep giving everybody else this advice, but here you are where you know clearly there's an opportunity here that you wanna go execute that you're way more passionate about, but instead you're taking the easy route. You're taking the predictable. You know what the outcome's gonna look like. And one day I decided, 
enough's enough, I'm leaving. I'm making the decision, I'm going. And I called my co-founder Ethan in and I told him and he was like, oh no. I'm like, dude, I can't, I can't help it. I gotta do this, I gotta make this decision. I gotta go build this company. I just feel like an imposter. And he was like, whoo, you know, I'm not gonna call it some names, but they, he was like, he's not gonna take it well, right? The CMO that kind of championed the deal and then the CEO was gonna be super upset, the acquiring company. And I was like, all right. And I, I still remember when I told the CMO, like his response was like, like, rage like want like almost wanted to physically attack me because it's like you lied to us you wanted to do this from the beginning you had no desire to stay and all these like crazy statements and allegations and I was like whoa 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 hey and I got a little upset because I'm like no I build this thing as a utility for me I had no plans on building a company but the truth is is that what you guys said we would be doing and what we're actually doing is not exactly a hundred percent so let's just get clear on that and the other one is, is I want I can't sit here and not express myself creatively. I've just, I wanna go build this thing. And I left and I walked away from my earnout, and I decided to take a bet on me. The bet was, can I create more value in the next year working on my own company from scratch than staying with the company with a predictable outcome? This is millions of dollars on, on the line. And I made the bet and I moved forward. Now here's, here's what's crazy. Even though I got threatened, I was walking away from millions of dollars. I was upsetting a lot of people on my team because they were like, hey man, like I thought we were all supposed to do this. And I was like, I, I get it and I don't know how to explain it, but just trust me, this is what I gotta go do. You know, even though a lot of people were like, I can't believe he's like moving on so quickly, you know? I made the decision, it was hard. And I just kept plugging away. And here's what's crazy, within two months, I ended up raising $1.7 million from some of the top investors in the world, you know, Freestyle Capital, Baseline Ventures, Mark Cuban wrote a big check, um, and a bunch of the best angel investors valuing the company, I think at like six or $7 million pre-money. So that, that was like a proof point. But this is the crazy story that a lot of people do not know. I wanted to share it with all of you guys. Is uh, about a month after or maybe a couple months after I had announced the fundraising, um, I'm on vacation back east, okay, where I grew up in Eastern Canada, and my co-founder Ethan calls, and I'm, I remember where I was uh, standing on the boat, out on the outside of Shidiac Bay with my family, or with my wife's parents, they were there, and I take the call, and Ethan's like, yo man, what's up? And I was like, oh, nothing much, just on vacation, blah, 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 he's like, how's things? I was like, good, he goes, did you see the news? And I said, what news? He's like, you didn't see the news? And I was like, no, man, I've been kind of on vacation. I haven't been really plugged in. He goes, Demand Force just got acquired by Intuit. And I was like, no way. I was like, for how much? He's like 500 million or 300 million. It was a lot, hundreds of millions of dollars. And I was like, awesome, like good. Like I knew, I, I wanted people to do well, right? Some of my investors had gotten some stock in the company, so it was a win-win for everybody. And Ethan goes, yeah, but you don't realize what that means. And I say, what's that? He goes. Because we got acquired in our sales agreement, there was essentially a clause that said if there was a change of ownership, all of our stock would accelerate. And as long as I'm still working at the company in 12 months from this date, Dan, you get your stock from the earnout. And I was like, holy crap. And I just thought to myself like, how does, how does the world work? How does the universe do this, right? And that's when I remember this quote I'd heard that, you know, the world rewards those that make courageous decisions. The world will reward you if you do what's hard and, and not as easy. So what I wanna share with you is like three beliefs that I've formed from that moment and many others. Cause I gotta tell you, every time I've taken risk, on the other side of that, there was reward, but it didn't come obviously. So the first one is the idea that it has to serve other people. See, I was passionate about Clarity because I believe that it had the opportunity to impact millions of people's lives, and it actually went on to do that. You know, the company, we built it over a two and a half year period. We got acquired by startups.com. It was an incredible journey and success, but the premise was is that it served other people, right? 
And I think that if you want the universe, the world to support you in your crazy ideas, it has to be to serve other people. It can't be for your own ego, your own self-interest. The other thing is that it has to scare you. And a lot of you guys are saying, well, I take risk. You know, I'm a risk taker and I'm, and I'm here to tell you like, I don't think so. Some of you guys have already made a million dollars and your risk is 50K, okay? No, 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 no. You remember back in the day when you took the last 10K in your bank account and you put it on the line to start your business. The ratio of risk and fear starts to diminish over time if you don't keep it in check. And that's my, that's what I'm, I'm gonna challenge you to think about is like all those things that you think are risky, did it really scare you? It's like oftentimes when uh, I look at founders that like leave their job working at Google, Facebook, et cetera, and they're like, oh, I'm taking risks to go join this startup and accelerator. It's like, not really, because worst case, it doesn't work out and you just go get a job back at the accelerator, right? But to me, it has to, it has to make you feel uncomfortable. It's gotta give you that like inside your stomach feeling of like, oh, it's scary. But in that moment, you take action and you go forward regardless. That has to be present. And the third one is, is that luck, luck's gonna be involved, right? Like at the end of the day, there is, there is an element, people say all the time, the harder I work, the luckier I get. But here's the truth. I know a lot of founders that want things out of their life. They like say, oh, I wanna like be successful. I wanna grow my business. I wanna hire great people. And I see luck show up. I see them knocking on the door. They're outside the door. Luck's like, hey, I found this great person. And you know what the person does? They don't answer the door. They drag their feet around making the decision. They don't engage. They don't bring their A game. And they don't even realize. They're like, oh, I wish I was a little bit more luckier. And I'm thinking there, I seen luck show up and talk to you, scream in your face, and you still don't respond. Like at the end of the day, if I didn't, you know, take action to go put myself in a lucky position to raise the capital, to, you know, build the team, to do all these things, then it doesn't matter what the outcome's gonna be. Like luck has to be present. And that to me is like part of it. So if, if you feel on your soul, if your heart is telling you to make a decision and it's to serve other people and yes, yourself, to progress your career, but also impact a lot of people's lives and it scares you inside, you got these butterflies, but you're willing to put in the work, trust that luck will show up. And that is what I believe is the reason why the world rewards courageous decision. And there's this great quote that's just gonna like summarize the whole thing from a guy named Jack Canfield. If you haven't heard of him, he's the author of Chicken Soup for the Soul. He's an incredible human. Um, and he says that everything you desire, everything you want is on the other side of fear, okay? Everything. It's just the fact. It's like people want things. They want goals. They want money. They want health. They want whatever. But it's going to be on the other side of fear. And if you learn to build that muscle, because here's what's happened for me over the years, is I just, a lot of things I do today, people are like, whoa, that must have been so scary. And I'm like, nope. And why? Because you build the muscle. You make decisions. You take action. You, you fall. You get a feedback loop. You learn. You take actions. You make decisions. You fall. And, and not all of them hit, but eventually they start to hit. And then you like build this confidence loop, right? So it's this confidence, confidence loop. And that for me is the essence of it. Is everything you want is on the other side of the fear. That is my message. That is the belief that I want to install into your mind. It's what I have for you. And uh, with that, I hope this finds you incredible. And I want to wish you an amazing rest of your day. And I'll see you next week.